Hello everyone. Hi. So our moderator is facing some network issues, I guess. So hi everyone. I'm Aditya Mathur. I'm the founding partner of Mediate Guru, and I will be taking forward from here for now. So welcome one and all to the international webinar on introduction to mastery class on mediation. So first of all, a little bit about Mediate Guru. So Mediate Guru is a social initiative led by members all across the globe. The aim of our organization is to bridge the gap between general public and litigation. We are creating a social awareness campaign for showcasing mediation as the future. We have successfully conducted various international webinars promoting alternative dispute resolution, having a reach in more than 100 countries around the world. With an international family growing each day, we thrive to provide you the best lecture series through the best speakers around the world. And trust me, today is one of that. So I feel honored to welcome the esteemed uh, speaker for today's webinar, Ms. Kathleen Ruan Leedy. So Ms. Kathleen is a Peers Country Center for Dispute Resolution uh, uh, mediator. She is the first court juror of US. She's a, fo a former di uh, divorce mediator at North Fork Probate and Family Court. She's a former courts and training coordinator at Family uh, Services at Central Massachusetts. She's the former summary process mediator at Quincy District Court. She's a former small case and divorce mediator at Plymouth Family and Probate Court. She's a former small claims and summary process mediator and so much more. So I'm not going to waste your time with that and let ma'am take over today. <laughs> So ma'am, please take over and guys, as always, you know, if you have any queries or anything, you can always write to us in the chat box. Ma'am uh, ma will obviously take it up. And please note, this is an interactive webinar. You please uh, do feel free to interact through chat box, interact to me, interact to ma'am, interact to or any of our hosts. So ma'am, please uh, take over. Thank you so much. Uh, ma'am, you are on mute, please. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, yeah, we cannot hear you still, ma'am. Sorry. Can you try turning your mic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think you're audible. No, you're not. St you're still not audible. Try turning out on your mic, ma'am, from the top corner. Uh, just. Uh, no, ma'am, you are not audible. How about Can that? You... Are we working yeah. now? We are working now. We are working now. That's good. Thank Very you. So good. Federica, I see you as well. Well, thank you for that kind introduction. And good morning from the East Coast um, of the United States. And good evening and good afternoon to everyone else attending. And I want to thank Media Guru yet again for hosting all these amazing topics. And I, um, I'm very grateful to be able to talk to the mediation profession, practice, industry about mastery level mediation, why it's so important. And Frederica, I see you and then I don't see you. You are my, moder my moderator and there you are. I want to welcome you as well. Thank you for doing this together. And Hello. Hi, you've had uh, several mediation trainings, so I want you to just jump in with me if there's something that you want to ask or point out. Okay. Thank you, Kathleen. It's an honor to be here with you. Thank you so much. So let's, I'm going to start this presentation and let's see what we have here. Um, interestingly, um, is, it, is it large enough? Can everyone see? Let's see, let's start. There we go. Interestingly enough, I'm here on the island of Eleuthera, which is Bahamas. And it's a, I'm on the main island. And all, all these islands, all three or four of them together, only have about 11,000 people living here. So it's very, very remote. And I'm in the middle where it's skinny. So <laughs> I've been here for several weeks with a kind invitation from a friend. And I've been enjoying it. But interestingly enough, Eleuthera is a Greek word that means free or freedom. And the island itself sits in the middle of, on the north, the, the right side of your screen over here is the wild Atlantic Ocean, which is behind me, that I'm showing you a vision of. And on the left is the Exuma Sound, Caribbean water that's very smooth and calm typically and way greener than the uh, Atlantic. 
And it reminds me of mediation. Like this island, mediation sits in the middle of people that have different colors, personalities, levels of turmoil. And we sit here in this space and interestingly enough, as a profession, all mediators, we have something in common. We want to see people set free, like the name of this island, from a dispute, from a particular conflict that they can't figure out how to resolve. So we have a heartbeat for setting people free. We have a heartbeat for caring about people. We're in the humanities. And um, with that, I am challenging and I would like our, our industry, I'll call it, to give, incline their ear and give a keener sense to actually what we're doing. And I put all of the things I've been doing as an introduction shared as well. And then all of this to show since 2008, I've been in this industry and all this training and all these doing all these things and over 400 hours of training and over two years of intense two to three days a week sitting with my judges and mediating their cases through their clerks and courts and private practice and until we reach some kind of mastery. So I want to challenge our industry to do things a little differently other than having someone go through 13 years like I have of trying to find my answers, things not quite feeling right about after taking the 40 hour basic training and, and I have more questions and I don't feel like I know what I'm doing. I have to pursue all these venues to figure it out. So let's talk about what I think I'd like to see mediation do with its time. We're in the humanities, therefore we're dealing with people, of course, and we're dealing with people, all parts of people, and people bring a lot of different parts to the mediation table. They bring their personality, they bring their ways of thinking, they bring their struggles, they bring their humanness to the table. And mediation has the ability to look and clarify at all different parts of the human being. Simply saying mediation at its base is just having a conversation at the table with a third party neutral. And we, we call ourselves trained and therefore we're a, we're a, um, we, we're a process expert because we're calling ourselves trained after the 40 hour basics. So if we're the process expert and we're the neutral party that can help people sit down and figure out what to do because they can't find an, a, a conclusion agreement on their own, then we need to make sure that we really are looking at ourselves as process experts. And there's a lot of things that I hear as a mediator in our, in our industry, in our field of mediation. And some of the things don't really set well with me as a mediator and as a person. For instance, one of the things in the mediation world all the time is the agreement rate of a mediator doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have a 95% agreement rate or 25% agreement rate. It almost seems like mediators that have high agreement rates are actually bragging. And my question is, it doesn't matter for who. Yes, it does matter for the people at the table that came to the mediation table and expected, hoped to walk away with an agreement. I'm the one that has sat in a mediation center and heard a couple come out of a mediation that did not come to agreement. And they threw up their hands and they said, we can't even mediate right. So here they walked into a process that we promise is a neutral, hopeful process. And they come out, I'm going to say, potentially with more shame heaped on them, more guilt heaped on them, more discouragement heaped on them because they can't even mediate right. And that is a direct quote, a quote that I overheard. So let, let me dive into this um, and see what I would like our industry to do. The basic class that we all profess across the world, lots of places across the world, especially in the United States, is we take a 40 hour basic mediation training or a 30, 30 hour basic mediation training. So what is that really? That basic class is a wonderful class. It's teacher taught, but it's about grasping the concepts and the process of mediation because mediation is a concept, has five concepts, and it is a process that we put people through. That's what that 40 hour basic class is teaching us. And we do a lot of memorizing. We memorize the mediator's opening. We memorize the process. We memorize the principles. And we do some interacting, usually with role plays. 
the mastery class that I am introducing to this profession of this wonderful movement of mediation is a teacher-led discovery learning for people that have been mediating so they can continue to grow. It's a wide angle and a micro view of our skills as mediators to lead us to a superior proficiency in mediation because especially due to COVID, mediation has become a very small and large world at the same time. We have mediators crossing borders into different states, into different countries. And now via the Singapore Convention agreements, we have mediate agreements crossing borders and cultures. And so I think that we're being called to a higher proficiency, a superior level of being able to mediate for this cultural humbleness and dexterity because we do want to continue to assist people that desire a successful outcome through mediation. And this mastery class is the place for people that have mediated to be transparent and correctable, implementing our due difference in our practice, listening to learn, being grateful for corporate knowledge of the whole group that leads us to growth. And if we just focus into those due difference in mediation, why do we have due difference? Lots of times we call them our due difference. And what they really are is a failure at the mediation table to connect. We've made a mistake somehow at the mediation table and we want to correct our mistake. Well, guess what? As mediators, we get to correct our mistakes. But as the people that were there at the mediation table, that mistake or that lack of intuition or insight that we had affects their lives. So we don't want to we don't want to make mistakes with people's lives at our mediation table. We want to arrive at that mediation table as a process, a trained process expert, as this certification in some states or training in most areas says that we can do. So let's look at this. Mediation basic class is a one-off. I've taken probably seven different 40-hour basic basic mediation classes because I've gone to different states to mediate and I wanted to be respectful. And that's what it is. And in that one-off class, I've learned a few more things and a few more things and a few more things. And I, I've paid lots of money to learn a few more things. And I paid lots of money to be respectful. A mastery class is a discovery along fellow professionals for extraordinary growth where we can continue to interact with each other and grow. We can make a WhatsApp group of everyone in the class. We can exchange ideas and we help with our problems. But we want to rub shoulders in our mastery classes with trained mediators where we can learn from them. What do you do that works? What do you do that works? What do you do that works? The point is it works for them. And that's what Media Guru has been so kind to pursue um, with our next series of classes with our mastery class. We have mediation as a dialogical process, praxis, which means that we are actually practicing as we're moving through the mediation process. We are implementing the principles and processes of mediation into what we do, and that's a praxis. And this is what I mean by sometimes the fall down, pick yourself back up, and your due difference, because it is a praxis. And we can do better than that. We can have the 40-hour basic and a 24-hour up-level class and a 24-hour mastery class to help us when we finally get to the table to do better at our dialogical praxis. I also want to mention that we do want to work our way up a competency. So the competency of having that high agreement rate, that should be, that should be something that we're grateful for, that our mediators have that. That should be something we're applauding in our industry, not saying that it doesn't matter because somebody walks away with something more clarity at the mediation table, which is true. But again, who are we talking about? The parties that walked away without a mediated agreement, how is that for them? Is it okay with them as well? So this dialogical praxis happens on our way to becoming competent. And I would like the mediation industry practice to really have inclined their thinking toward competency and view competency as what it really is, a high level mediator that has just magical mediation skills at the table that can help parties come to an agreement no matter what fervor they're bringing in disaccord with each other. So we're looking toward this high level of competency and skills that start out to be awkward in the beginning after the 40-hour basic and doesn't they don't feel so comfortable can really flow 
we can really have these skills that come to us that quick because we've practiced them, because we're good at it, because we now know where it belongs at the mediation, because we're looking at the person as a whole person. So we have good analysis at the table as as we approach the mastery level. We also have good intuition at the mediation table as we approach the mastery level. And that's what we all are looking for, I would hope, as mediators that have a heartbeat for people's lives to be better. As we go into this a little bit more detail, our mediation is very linear with this process. All these stages of mediation as people sit at our table. It's very linear in how we introduce the concepts of mediation as well. So we have this linear in mediation. And the mastery level, as I see it, we have a new word that I want to introduce at the mastery level, and that is the word symmetry. So here we have this linear process. And we also have the meta the kindness and the care of the mediation process. Because as mediators, we're literally suspending judgment. We're told, you must be neutral. Well, what does that mean? It means suspending judgment about what you're hearing or what you're seeing at the mediation table partially. And that's a, that is an act of kindness. We're seeing the best in people at the table as they aim toward their mediated agreement, helping them get there instead of judging what we're hearing. So we're suspending our judgment. So we're doing two things at once. We're running a linear process, but we're also having this metaphysical process of kindness side by side. And with that being said, thirdly, we're journeying in, into the unknown, no matter how well we know our process, no matter how well we know the concepts of mediation. We don't know what the people are going to say at the table. We never know. Even clients we've had for seven months in a row, we never know what they're going to say. So we are journeying into the unknown. And because we're journeying into the unknown, we need to have this concept of symmetry. Because we need to be able to produce symmetry in the three narratives of mediation, the essential narratives of words, what do they mean by their words? How can we produce symmetry and balance with their words? What is their body language telling us? And if emotions show up at the mediation table, how can we produce symmetry with these emotions as well? Symmetry is the tug of war between the linear of meta mediation and the meta of mediation. The meta just basically is the more. It's about how does the person feel about themselves, about their being, about their identity? How are we using our concepts of time, of space in the mediation process? These are principles that are happening at our mediation table that we need to be paying attention to. We need to be training our mediators to pay attention to not only the, the, that they're existing, coexisting on the table, but there's a power struggle. There's a, there's a saying out there, people will forget what you do. They'll forget what the, you say. I think it's Maya Angelou, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And this is what's happening at the mediation table as well. How does struggle, how are we handling the symmetry or the balance between the struggle of the linear and the meta? Meta just means beyond or beyond what is happening beyond and beyond, double beyond what's happening. And what is, we have the process, we will have what the people are saying, we can see what their body's doing, we can hear their tone of voice, and what else is happening. We need to develop a sixth sense at the mediation table to merge it with our linear process as we approach the mastery level. As I explained to me what the mastery level is, because who we have at our table, we have human beings. And if we look at the basis of symmetry, human beings are symmetrical. We're built with symmetry. We're built with a natural beauty and natural symmetry. And we can feel when there's a lack of symmetry, like some of these slides, people might say, oh, I don't really like that slide. Well, that's a lack of symmetry for them. And we, we can sense this. That's why when a mediator asks a particular question and Maybe someone gets angry or nobody says anything. It might be because of lack of mediator symmetry and how that question was worded. The issue with symmetry is that people feel it and they can feel the lack of it. 
And that is an important energy that's happening at our mediation table that I want the mastery class to be able to understand and know what to do with it. It's our job as mediators to hold both of these steady. Even though the linear and the meta are both changeable, it is our job to hold them steady, to rebuild them, to hold what is existing right now steady, and also maybe to rebuild it. If it gets out of symmetry, we need to rebalance, and the master class will be talking about this as well. We want the linear of mediation, the process that's succinct, to expose and create the symmetry of the human beings and what they want and what their interests are. And that's the balance that I'm talking about. So this master class as we head toward mastery is all about symmetry. And you can see that if you look at these beautiful flowers and you may really like them, if you look more closely, look how linear they are. There's flowers that are in a linear mathematical symmetry with each other and that linear Balanced proportion produces a beauty, and that's what I'm looking for our mediation table to have happen at the mastery level and the awareness of it. Because maintaining the symmetry in mediation involves the whole, which is the gestalt of the mediation. But then it also involves the parts, which is actually the parts are greater than the sum of the whole. The sum of the parts are greater than the whole. So we have this gestalt theory but also we have the spaces in between. And at the mastery level teaching, that's where I see the mediator is in the space. And we actually shine clarity into the spaces between the trees, which are people's positions, and the whole picture, which is the big picture, but we also have the details and the positions which reflect interest. And that's what our job is as mediators. Perfect example last week on the east on the west coast i was doing a mediation and a mother and a father were talking about parenting time and one side had levied all these court actions like like 12 court actions and dragging the other person into court 12 times within i don't know 2 years year and a half and the one person was tired of that and they talked about each tree in that forest, that big picture forest of this whole picture of being dragged into court 12 times within a year, year and a half. So I was getting all the details, all the trees, all the positions of everything. So then I asked a mediator question for clarity. And I said, as your mediator, it sounds like, and I tiptoed into it slowly, that this whole process has been very intimidating. And the person went, um, intimidating, pause for a moment, and then went, absolutely, that's exactly what this has been. So what I mean to say by saying that is that the word intimidation describes the whole big picture that the person at the mediation table wasn't even tuned into. They were just in tuned into all these details all the exact details, the date, the time, and all the details of what was happening. But the big overall picture of intimidation didn't strike them. But when this last, this court order came, they changed their, their position because they were intimidated by the court order. So therefore, intimidation became the word at the mediation table that was being discussed now with the overall picture and how was that for them to experience this overall feeling of intimidation. So this is a very short, nice little chat about the mastery level training and why I think it's necessary and why the word for mastery level training is symmetry between the linear and all the organic intuitive things that are happening at the table. And that's what I would like our industry to pursue moving forward. And that's what we are going to pursue um, with the mastery class that Mediate Guru is sponsoring. And I welcome any questions or comments from anyone as we have a sh short five minutes left in this quick, quickie on air presentation. Thank you, Kathleen. While we wait for our um, participants question, I want to thank you for this insightful and interesting, I would call it sneak peek into your next training. And it's so easy to feel back in class with you when uh, we hear talking you and, um, I was taking notes when you were 
you were talking and uh, what I think is that uh, doing the first and the second training and I hope as many participants here will join us in the next training is that it those kind of training you provide is such an insightful experience as a human being uh, before being an insightful experience as a mediator. And I think uh, each one of us will gain so much more um, in taking part to this mastery class. So I see a question here. We have a very technical uh, question. Uh, how can I join this class? I think um, Mediate Guru will provide uh, all the participants with links and uh, the Google form you will have to uh, fill in in order to participate. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and yeah, Guru, if you can just put that in the chat right now, that would be great. And thank you for saying that, Frederica, because at the end of the day, one of the constants that we have at the mediation table, everyone's a human being. Mm -hmm. And to ignore that strong presence of humanity at the table where we're designed for symmetry and we can feel when it's symmetrical, we can feel when things have beauty to them, and we can feel when there's a lack of that, is to really ignore uh, an area, arena that can be tapped into because people do difference in mediation when they leave a mediation. That, that brings freedom to their lives. It brings freedom Absolutely. in their new business deal. It brings freedom in their personal disputes. It brings freedom in putting something, getting it over with and done. And it's mediation is the place at in the in the legal system where everyone's got full authority and power to make decisions for their own lives. They don't have a judge overlooking. They don't have a lawyer being a gladiator and fighting for them because mediation is not about fighting, which brings into into question the mandated mediations which I just recently have experienced a couple of them where one side has come to the table in the mediation table, just wanting to get everything they wanted. That's mm -hmm. a court position. And so now we've got our process of mediation. No mediation is about giving and receiving and you're here to take, take, take and not give. So look at that. Look at that. What we have to muck our way through now. How do we handle that as a mediator or where they have these human beings coming to the mediation table with a court mentality. And we've got, to, we've got to tread through that carefully. We can be insulting people because they want what they want, but we've got to be educating them more so about the process of mediation now, even more so because of these mandated mediations. So there's a lot going on with mediation, which I think really does beg for mastery level training. Absolutely. And it's all about self-determination as we learned in our previous training, but I think we will, uh, with this mastery class, we will go towards our um, unconscious competencies and we will learn even more how to have those right intuitions that will change someone's life possibly. That's, yes, that's the great hope for mediation. Um, we change people's lives with them being at the table, they're changing their own lives at the table because they've mm -hmm. got greater clarity, greater awareness, because we're shining the light into all of them, not just into their business deal, but into their interests behind their positions. And then and then behind interests are why are you attached to that interest, which you never hear about attachments in mediation training. What is your attachment to the interest that's behind the position that you brought to the mediation table? So we keep digging, we're like the great detectives. <laughs> we keep digging, digging, digging until we get to their clarity so they can understand for themselves exactly what they're here at the table for. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to thank Mediate Guru because in this, I think they're doing an extraordinary job in um, thinking about and organizing such innovative type of trainings. And it's something unique. And those who have experienced that will, will be able maybe to share their experiences and uh, and they will tell how different they have uh, they have come out from such a training from such a class. So uh, I just remind want to remind our participants that the training will be starting on February the nineteenth for three weeks during weekends in the afternoon, mm -hmm. or um, we will be able to give you to share all the details if you are interested. Mm -hmm. But it's surely wor worth the experience, I think. So I encourage anyone who has any other question to
to feel free to comment anything. And I would like to encourage the, the practice of mediation, our, our, our uh, practice to develop their mastery classes you know, in your own country, in your own state, to please take people beyond their 40-hour basic into a, an up-level class and then finally into a mastery class with mediators with five years or more of experience so we can really, really master what our process and principles um, have for people, the hope that's really waiting out there for people. Mm -hmm. I see a comment here in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, someone, uh, Iqbal, um, is asking, uh, what is the difference in Indian v, uh, versus uh, USA mediation? That's an interesting question. The, there, the USA uh, did uh, did a lot of training in India back in the day. The, the United States mediation process is pretty much spread around, I think, most of the world, I would say. So we've got some inroads, but basically mediation is globally the same because of the fact that it's about a third party neutral, the process is confidential, um, self-determination where the mediator is not going to make decisions for you. The United States, to directly answer your question, some you know states are different with their mediation principles, like in Washington state where I mediate, they have, you have to mediate in good faith faith, which means you have to, you know, give your best effort. In Massachusetts, you have to, you have to have informed consent, which means you have to, the information at the table has to be clear enough for you to give your consent and you can, you can stop the mediation, go get a lawyer. I think the difference maybe between mediation in the United States and everywhere around the world is that every, most every county in most of the states in the United States has a mediation center. So in one state, you can have several mediation centers where you can go to to get a situation mediated. And we also have relationships with the courts. So I think maybe everyone's doing the same thing, but in the United States, we're doing a lot of it. Like for instance, in Massachusetts itself, I know of at least five mediation centers in the very small state of Massachusetts, and there's probably more than that. So mm -hmm. I think there is more similarity than differences and the training um, across the United States is pretty similar. I just do, when I train, I do a deep dive, as you know, into everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> no, no stone is unturned, you know, in the mediation trainings. But I think, again, there might be more similarities with our styles of mediation across the world, India, United States, the UK, where I just came from. Uh, then we have differences. It's all about the fine tuning of what we're doing, I think, mm -hmm. is really important. And how we conduct ourselves as mediators, because we're really in charge of the process. I always say the mediation is only as good as the mediator. And I really, <laughs> truly believe that. We agree. And I have, um, with regard to the training itself, um, I have a, a question from Chad. Um, if you could speak about the um, interactive nature of, uh, of the training, how will the training uh, in a practical manner uh, take place? Thank you, Chad. Um, Frederica, as you know, I always do improv training where I invite mm -hmm. people to share from their own life. So mm -hmm. in my trainings, we never read a script about some pretend argument. I was always like, okay, what's your latest argument? <laughs> and what do you want to share about your life that we can mediate, that you're willing to be transparent about? And that interactive is important to me as a trainer because it makes people in the training feel the feelings that people have that are sitting across the table from the mediator. I'm like, you want to mediate? Well, I want to make you feel it too. <laughs> So what happens Absolutely. interactive <laughs> training, there's all these aha moments. Oh, oh, that's how it feels. Oh, that's how it feels. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, you're asking people to be transparent as a mediator. And in the training, um, you have to do it as well. So that's the interactive nature of my trainings. And I think I would like to invite other trainers to do the same thing. Remember, I have the three levels of sharing. I have the first Absolutely. level of something, share something really superficial, like my favorite color is purple. And then I have share something more, you know, moderately important, like um, I like the church that I go to because of this. And then I have the third level of sharing, which is deeper, sharing something that really disturbs you. Like my mother-in-law, my father-in-law said this, I'm upset about this. And people can choose to pick. 
choose to pick. Does that make sense? <laughs> People can yeah. choose what level they want to sit at. And when I do it, actually, when I do it in person, which I haven't done it in a couple of years, people actually sit in a row of chairs. So they actually sit in the row that's dedicated to each level of sharing and they sit there to the point where I want people to feel the feelings of what it takes to share with strangers. I think everyone starts out as strangers in mediation training and on our trainings, everyone ends up as such great friends. So that that's the answer to Chad's question. Thank you for the question, Chad. So, so I think yeah. our time might be coming to an end. Is that fair to say? Yes. Okay. Slowly, yeah. So first of all, I want to thank all the participants for taking their time and join us today. Uh, I invite everyone to fill the feedback form in before you leave so you will be able to get your certificate. And I want to encourage you from really from the bottom of my heart and knowing from my first hand experience to join this mastery class starting on February the 19th. And please reach out. Um, don't uh, don't miss updates from Mediate Guru. You can follow us uh, on the social media, WhatsApp groups, and uh, our website. Um, so please feel free to join and uh, ask questions, and we will be able to answer you uh, with regard to the training or anything else. And I want to thank you so much, Kathleen. Uh, please enjoy your view and the sunlight and and the seaside for us as well. It's been a <laughs> it's been a blast to have you and thank you for sharing this uh, one more with us. It's my pleasure and I'm so glad that you were here with me. Um, it's nice it's nice to have one of my students be at my <laughs> side. Thank you so much for being willing to spend time together. And is there anything else that comes to your mind before we sign off, Federica? I don't want to leave out anything that you might have thought to yourself when you were listening. Uh, we have a comment from our friend Zaina, uh, eagerly waiting for our mastery class. Uh, always mm -hmm. have something to learn from the great Kathleen. So oh. <laughs> the perfect way, <laughs> perfect way to end this webinar. Hi, Zaina. It's great to know you're joining the, the mastery class. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. Hello. We're, we all make great together. Great is a collective term, right? So we're looking yeah. forward to doing that together again in our mastery class. Wish everyone well. I'm going to go have some more coffee here in my early morning Good. start. And um, everyone have a wonderful afternoon and wonderful evening. And thank you for joining our webinar. Thank I you so much. See you soon. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you.